Hello, bros. We're taking a brief departure from long readings, and we're doing a short excerpt from the research that I have been doing from Ancient and Modern Britain, so Retrospective Volume 1. So there's an individual that I would need to do a little bit more research on because the book only briefly went over them. So it would be Niger Val Dub, a.k.a. King Kenneth of the Picts, 997 AD to 1004 AD. All right. Now, what are the Picts? Some of you guys are asking this question, so I'm glad you asked. We're going to Encyclopedia Britannica. So they're ancient people who live in now eastern and northeastern Scotland, the Cathys to Fife. Uh, their name may refer to the custom of painting their bodies, okay, possibly tattooing. So they would paint their whole bodies um, red, sometimes brown, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The origins of the Picts is uncertain. Some evidence suggests that they were descendants of pre-Celtic Aborigines. So if you guys know what Aborigine is, I don't need to go into that, but just in case. An Aborigine is an ancient or indigenous person descended from an area, um, not the current people that might call it home, but the most original and ancient people or persons, possibly, you know, those that can trace their history pre-Diluvian, pre-the flood. So, uh, but some linguistic evidence suggests they spoke a Celtic language. Oftentimes you had assimilation of languages, etc., etc. The Picts were first noticed in 297 when a Roman uh, writer spoke of the Picts and Irish Scots attacking the Herodon's Wall. Their warfare with the Romans during the occupation was almost continual. By the 7th century, they were united Pick land, which already had been penetrated by Christianity. Now, they didn't really accept Christianity. They were kind of more or less like the um, uh, gypsies. Gypsies did not accept Christianity like that. So in, okay, so we're going back into the article and here we go. The Moors were dominant in Scotland for 10th century. One of them was known as King Kenneth, sometime known as Niger or Dub. That's where you get the concept of dubs. When you get the 20s on your whip, I got dubs. <laughs> a surname which means the black man. It's a historical fact that Niger Val Dub lived and reigned over certain black divisions in Scotland and that the race was known as the Sons of Black succeeded him in history. And that's from J. Rogers' Sex and Race. So Kenneth III of Scotland was the King of Scotland from 997 to 1005. He was the son of King Dub a fourth cousin of previous king Constantine III and the first cousin successor Malcolm III. Kenneth was the first, was the last king of Scotland to succeed to the throne through the system of tanistry. Now some of you guys are saying, what in the world is tanistry? Again, we're going back to the Encyclopedia Britannica. Tanistry is a custom among various Celtic tribes, notably in Scotland and Ireland, by which the king or chief of the clan was elected by family heads in full assembly. He held office for life and was required by custom to be a full age in possession of all his facilities without any remarkable blemishes, mind or body. At the same time and subject to the same conditions, a Tannis or next heir to the chieftaincy was elected who, if the king died or became disqualified, at once became king. Sometimes the king's son became Tannis, but not because the system of, you know, P-R-I-M-O-G-E-N-I-T-U-R-E, -E, I'm not going to butcher that word, was in any way recognized. Indeed, the only principle adopted was the dignity of the chiefmanship should be descended to the eldest and most worthy of the same blood, who well could be a brother, nephew, or cousin. The system of secession left the headship open to the ambitious and was frequent source of strife within both families which led to wars and between clans tanistry in scotland was formally abolished in early 17th century during the reign of james the sixth of scotland james the first of england and the english system 
of that word we just tried to pronounce, but I'm not going to butcher. <laughs> okay, bros. So, however, Kenneth had a granddaughter, G-R-O-U-C-H, V-I, his daughter, B-O-I-T-E, whose first husband was, Jews. I'm not going to try to butcher that name, G-I-L-A-C-O-M-G-A-I-N. They had a son called Luluk. She married a man named Macbeth I of Scotland, becoming Lady Macbeth. On the death of Macbeth, her son, through the first marriage, Kenneth III, great-grandson, succeeded to the throne, becoming the king of Luluk of Scotland. So, you had the, you know, he succeeded to the throne, and he was confirmed the existence of numerous black people and persons of Scotland and they tried to butcher his image and try to make him white. So I've seen many images of him and I've seen pictures of him as a white guy. So here's the image right here. The archeologist and writer, David McRitchie, who actually wrote Ancient and Minor Britons, uh, declared that the Moors dominated Scotland as late as the time of the Saxon Kings. He stated with scholarly authority so late as the 10th century Three of these provinces of Scotland were wholly black and supreme ruler of these became for a time the paramount king of the transmarine Scotland. So the Moors of the Romans in the persons of the king of Albin of the 10th century history known him as Kenneth, sometimes as Dub, as Niger. We know it. as a historic fact, Niger Val Dub had lived and reigned over certain black divisions of our island and probably white divisions also. And that a race known as the sons of black succeeded him in history. So, chronicle records that during Dub's reign, Bishop Fontock, most likely Bishop St. Andrews of Duncleb, died. The remaining reports of a battle between Dub and Cullen, the son of King I. Dub, Dub won the battle, fought upon the ridge of Krupp, in which Ducat, son of Dunkville, sometimes supposedly to be the ancestor of the Shiran of Dunkville and Dubion, the Mormoner of Anatole, died. So, there's your history. Okay. And there's interesting, 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 interesting facts about how you have names that are oftentimes taken like Moore and even Douglas. Oftentimes they would characterize every single person that was so-called black in this region as a Douglas because you had black Douglas. So that is a name of great importance when you hear the name Douglas because they would just call anybody. Oh, he's a Douglas. <laughs> wow, they were kind of simple minded back then. But. You have names that were interchangeably used based on skin color. And this was this is something that still exists to this day. They call every single person here in America, even though they could have been native indigenous. And there's a unique section and this other book that I was reading about um, the so-called black native indigenous tribes, which I'll be doing in a video later. Not today. Don't ask for it. But it has numerous pictures and articles about so-called black indigenous native persons here and but back in England you had the black Douglases uh, people they would call the so-called black wild Irishmen Scots etc 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 okay so that's all for the day hope you guys enjoyed this little drop all right I'm getting back to my studies peace bro